Hello everybody on this beautiful fall morning. We have another set of Nations League games behind us and this will be a shorter video. I'm doing it at home, but also there's not much to say. Um, I was watching yesterday Austria against Northern Ireland um, and like after 30 minutes I thought this game is really boring. Austria is not getting anything together. Uh, and Northern Ireland is just defending, defending, defending. Let's see if there are other games that are a little bit more exciting. And I checked four other games. That was, of course, Croatia versus England, 0-0. Belgium against Switzerland, 0-0. Uh, Greece against Hungary, 0-0. Estonia, Finland, 0-0. And I thought, that cannot be. That's just uh, awful. And yeah. <sighs> I stuck in the end with Austria versus Northern Ireland. Uh, the second half got a lot more exciting, I have to admit. Um, there, was, there was an uh, early chance then by Northern Ireland and Austria. Arnautovic had a great one. Um, Sabitzer had another one. The Northern Ireland actually should have made the one nothing. Uh, horrible defending error by Brittle. Uh, and yeah, the attacker just shot wide. But Austria had then control of the game. Um, but again, in the attacking third, just too imprecise. Yeah, in the end, Arnautovic makes the winning goal. And if you followed my channel, he was happy about it because all this rumor about his captaincy, he was the captain and he made a celebration to that regard. But yeah, uh, better not spend more time uh, talking about it and when it seemed that this will be a secure victory for Austria in the past 10 minutes suddenly you know 80th to 85th suddenly they no Northern Ireland was coming at them and Austria couldn't actually launch any relief attacks and there was even a big chance I think it was Greg that's the one player that I remember now who headed the ball on the inside of the post where it jumped across goal right in the hands of the goalkeeper but uh, at first I thought this is going in and it would have been a typically Austria result. Um, but yeah, they hung on to the victory. Now uh, six points for Bosnia, three for um, Austria, zero for Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland is playing in Bosnia and I'm actually not sure what result I want to have there. Um, it is to the point where I think if uh, Bosnia wins, well, then it's clear that Austria needs to beat Bosnia to be promote it uh, and then win in Northern Ireland which is never easy um, but that way at least um, it is at least if they get a result at home against Bosnia um, they cannot be relegated anymore a draw would exactly make that that you know um, it might be easy to catch Bosnia but it also might be easy for Northern Ireland uh, on the final match day to beat Austria and um, relegate Austria and same thing goes for a Northern Ireland win, so I really don't know what I want from that game. Um, why? Because I don't trust Austria to get a result in Northern Ireland. Uh, this has been a ground where Austria has never been doing well. But let's get away from the Austria game. Uh, Croatia against England, from what I saw in the highlights, it was of course uh, so non-exciting with no fans there. If there were fans there, I would have watched that game. Uh, there's no question about it. England actually dominated that one. I think they hit uh, once the post, once the bar, and then Rashford had two big chances that he has to make. Uh, yeah, England dropped vital points there. Um, it still seems like that England is the second best team in this group. From what you could tell yesterday, um, Croatia is still too much in a transition period. Um, Let's get to these guys. Uh, they they seem to be the, the most exciting game of them all. I should have stuck with them. Um, Lukaku scored twice, uh, putting Belgium up. He missed a big chance. Uh, I think Gavranovic uh, equalized for Switzerland, who, uh, from what I sensed, gave Belgium a good fight, but of course um, can only do so much against a world-class team. And then Lukaku scores the winner. In only one of two games where I felt there is some uh, good crowd there. Um, but um, you couldn't really see it because the stadium in Brussels is so wide. So there you, you don't get much of a feel that there is a crowd. Uh, the Austria game was only half full stadium and 
again if they played maybe to a slightly lesser crowd because we don't have that many uh, stadiums uh, of good crowd but I think if you play even Salzburg which would be the second largest stadium at the moment or Klagenfurt which uh, for some reason they don't have a team to play in but they have a big stadium play in those and you probably have a good crowd but not in Vienna honestly so I don't get this and I saw this when I, the other highlight that I really want to watch was Greece against Hungary that seemed like an interesting game the highlights showed that Hungary had many chances but Mitroglou made the goal and it also showed this huge Olympic Stadium in Athens come more or less empty I mean the lower levels there were some spectators it was not that it was completely uh, empty but uh, the white stands it looked horrible honestly but yeah Greece uh, won against Hungary and it was weird to me that they just played against each other uh, the last time why don't we finish up with uh, Greece playing Finland that seemed uh, a little bit odd to me but okay that's how they did it and then the one uh, game that actually had a full stadium was Estonia against Finland yeah, it's, a, it's a neighboring duel between two nations that I guess uh, don't dislike each other too much but there's some rivalry they speak a similar language yeah uh, Estonia had some chances but it was mostly Finland especially in the second half they could have gotten uh, a winner much sooner they did it in ex uh, extra time added time uh, which is kind of the theme for <laughs> Baltic uh, nations these days because yesterday Lithuania lost also in stoppage time to Romania now to Finland Finland sits pretty on top of this group with nine points uh, Greece is second with, with six Hungary 3 and Estonia has lost all games so far. Also interesting, I'm still not sure if Estonia has actually new jerseys or they are still using the ones from previously. It looks like they have 2016 version, but this might be just the other Nike template that, for instance, Sevilla uses as well. I have to look into that closer. I surely will because I want to get this into my jersey review. Tonight we have the last uh, League C jersey review with the Romania group. Hope you enjoyed the other videos and yeah. Let me know what you thought about these games. I would like to make a longer video, but there was really not much more to tell uh, from the game I saw. I'm looking forward tonight uh, to Netherlands against Germany. Uh, always a classic, although I know, I think I know where this is going, but maybe they can surprise me. I think also Bulgaria is playing. Uh, and of course the uh, neighbors to the north, east, north and northeast, uh, Czechs are okay, playing the Slovaks. That should be an interesting one too. Well, let me know what you thought about all these games, uh, which ones you liked, whether you also think that they should play Nations League games in smaller stadiums. And, you know, I just posted um, the, my suggestions for making Nations League better. Maybe you can uh, watch that one too and tell me if you think there could be some improvements made uh, other than what I suggested, or maybe with some that you agree with me. Give me a thumbs up if you liked the video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.